Hey everybody, this is Will, and in this video, I wanna talk about changing key and tempo in Ableton Live. Now, there's two scenarios we're gonna discuss in this video. Number one is how to do this when you're working with a full song with stems, multi-tracks uh, that you have formatted uh, for live performance that you're ready to use. And then also how to do this with single track audio. So if you're dealing with one shot samples or full songs that you're using for an original song in a live scenario, then bear with me, we're gonna to get to that after we talk about stems. Let's talk about stems first. So I've got a song pulled up here that I have formatted. I formatted this. Uh, using what I call the three-part framework for using tracks, and I've used my free tracks template to format this. If you're interested in downloading the free tracks template, then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash template. You can download that completely for free. But one of the parts of formatting all my tracks and stems for flexibility so that I can build a set quickly and have flexibility live is making sure that I've warped my content. So if I unfold this group here and I look at these stems, you'll see that all of these stems are warped. The other thing I've done is I've set my uh, warp mode to complex so that um, uh, these stems are going to sound the best possible way that they could for full track content. Complex is the best warp mode. So now let's talk about changing tempo. Because I formatted this song properly and I used the free tracks template to do this, to change my tempo, here's all I do. I go up to my tempo track, I go to BPM, Let's take this from 80, let's say 85. And here's the very important thing to do whenever you're working with tracks, in particular a tempo track. A lot of people miss this. This is super important. If you change the tempo on the tempo track, go to where it says lead and click that. It's going to go to follow and then go back to lead. That way live registers that tempo change. So now let's go back here. I'm going to solo the click so that you can hear just the click. I'm going to press play and you'll hear that our click has sped up. Uh, so that's how we could quickly change our tempo. Now, if I want to go back, I could go back here and do 80 and again, do lead follow. Uh, and that's going to suddenly change my tempo back. You can see that reflected in live's uh, master tempo. Now using that tempo track is super helpful because it's going to carry over across all my songs and it's going to allow me to really quickly change the tempo of my song um, just by typing in that box, which makes it super easy. And that's the, why formatting your tracks properly the right way is the best thing to do in a live scenario. Now let's talk about changing key. Um, I'm not going to let you hear these stems just because they are copyrighted material and YouTube does not like that. Uh, but I do want to show you uh, to change uh, key on all my songs, here's just a quick kind of tip I do. I start typically, if I'm in rehearsal and need to do this quickly, I'll just grab all my content. I'll click my bottom most stem here. Uh, I'll press shift, so all these selected are selected. And then I can change my key using semitones or half steps. So I can go up uh, five half steps. I can go down this way. Um, now, what I did do here is I did grab all my percussive content. So even non-pitch stuff. Again, if I'm in rehearsal and I just really quickly need to change the key, I'm going to do that. But if I have time, then I'm going to go through and particularly say, okay, I don't need drums to be changed. Uh, my 808, there's no tone to it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's got a, a kick that's tuned, but it's not tuned in key. Uh, BGVs definitely need to change. So we're going to select those. Um, this electric guitar needs to change. Horns, keys, okay. Lead vocal needs to change. Effects, maybe there's some pitch stuff. Synth, definitely. Okay, so I'm just going through and individually selecting these and leaving percussion stuff out. Again, do this if you have time. If you have the time, then you could do that. Uh, and then I'm going to go through to each of these and I could change the pitch here. Particularly on pitched content and even particularly on um, a vocal content in particular, like a lead vocal here, we've got a lead vocal, uh, BGV, make sure you change the warp mode to complex pro because that's going to maintain the timbre of the vocal. So if you've ever pitched something up and you've heard it sound like the chipmunks or pitch it down and it sounds like Barry White, um, that's super helpful to change the pitch and maintain the timbre of it, particularly if you're creating like a rehearsal track for your, your band to rehearse with. Uh, you could do that and maintain the timbre of the vocal. You'll get some weird artifacts in there, so kind of choose wisely. But in general, that's how we can quickly change tempo and key uh, when we're working with full stems. Now, what do we do if we're working with single track audio? Um, the thing, we kind of do the same exact thing, but the thing that made this possible changing key and tempo um, of our stems live is warping. Our stems are pre-warped and we warp them as, as a part of the three-part framework for using tracks, formatting our songs using our template, uh, our free tracks template. Um, so what do I do when I have single track audio? So I'm gonna go to my live uh, file here I've got this file here. I'm going to drag it into my live set. But before I do that, I want to double check. I'm going to go to preferences, command comma. I'm going to go to record warp launch. And I want to double check that under the warp fade section, I've disabled default warp mode. Or excuse me, I've disabled auto warp long samples. So you see that right here. That's set to off. 
So what that means is I'm going to drag this file in and live is, is um, uh, I, I don't want live to make its guess at what the tempo is. Okay. I'm just going to drag it right in like this. Now, if you don't know what your tempo of your song is, then you could press play on your clip and you could listen to that. And let's turn this down a little bit, but you could listen to this and you could tap tempo one, two, three, four, turn your metronome on, compare those two volumes, try to get close as close as possible. Uh, but I know that my song is somewhere around 80 BPM. So I'm going to type 80 BPM. I'm going to delete this. I actually want to bring it over into arrangement view. So let's re-add it now. Okay. And we'll add this at 80 BPM because auto warp long samples is disabled. Uh, live is not going to guess what the tempo is. So I'm going to double click here. Um, you see that this is not warped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable warp. Um, and actually before I do that, let me show you, because you may be looking at this and going, well, Will, there's, there's a semitone, uh, adjustment right here. I can change the, the key, uh, w without having to warp this, right? Well, you can, but let me let you hear what that sounds like. So I'm going to play this. I'm going to change the key up I'm gonna change the key down. All right. And what you'll notice is you could visually see it happening as I change the pitch down and change the key down. The song is slowing down as I change the pitch up. The song is speeding up right now. That's kind of a cool effect. That's like a nice vibe if you need that for a song. Um, but we want to be able to change our key and pitch without affecting the timbre and without affecting the tempo of the song. So in this particular case, I am going to warp this. OK, and uh, this is full song. So I'm going to change my warp mode to complex because that works best for full songs. Now I'm going to zoom in here and take a look at this song. I want to try to find the first downbeat of one. Okay, and so this is uh, the close is closest to the first downbeat of one. I could get really nitpicky and zoom in here and say, well, actually, the first downbeat of one is right here. But I found when I'm warping and I'm dealing with warp, um, I, I don't need to zoom in super far. In fact, if you zoom in super far, you'll, you'll kind of go a little crazy. So here's my pseudo warp marker. I'm going to double click. Okay, and turn that into a warp marker. Then I'm going to right click and do set 1.1 here. So what that means is this is kind of what I'm assuming to be the first beat. There's a scenario where we could add some pre-roll. That's outside of the scope of this video, but we could add some time before this to grab this little section here, that little pre-roll thing. Uh, but now I know my tempo is around 80 BPM. You could see we're close here. Um, that, that second measure is slightly off. Let's go to measure five here. That's that's close to being honest. It's just it's slightly ahead of uh, of the measure. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here and I'm going to do warp from here. So that's going to apply lives auto warp um, algorithm to that. Another thing you could do that I use sometimes is I'll right click and do like warp 80 BPM from here. If I know exactly what the tempo is and the tempo is pretty straight, um, that could be an option that I do. Another thing I might do is if even after doing that, things still don't line up. And again, I don't zoom in much further than what I'm zoomed in here. Like if I look at this, you could see like that still doesn't look like it's perfect. Um, I'm not going to mess with it too far, but if things just feel loose, like they don't feel like they're, they're tight to lives metronome. Uh, and the way you would test this is you would turn on lives metronome, press play, and listen back. If it sounds like it's out of time, um, then I would go a step further. And what I would do here is go about every measure. I would double click on my warp marker and just click and drag this. And essentially what I'm doing, I'm taking this audio that's elastic and I'm just realigning this to lives ruler and lives grid, right? So I'm going in, double clicking to add my warp marker and I'm just shifting this and you would work left or right, uh, and move things where they're on grid. Sometimes if it's a song that, you know, wasn't recorded to click or is maybe going in and out of time, you may even want to go per uh, beat and literally like lock this in per beat, which is a little crazy. It will take a little bit of time, but an example I often use is I had to take a song that was not recorded to click originally that had tempo changes and time signature changes and sync that up to a click so that we had a click track that we could play with so we could play the song consistently. And then we could start adding other production and element automated element uh, automated uh, production elements. There we go. That's hard to say uh, to our track. And so to do that, I had to warp all of that. And to do that, I just worked left to right. I took it a bit at a time uh, and I finished it and I got through it. And so it's possible to do that. Most of the content we encounter live is going to be pretty standard, pretty um, consistent tempo. And so in a lot of cases, you just add your tempo, you hit warp and you're probably going to be super close. Okay. So now that I've got this set up, let's change our tempo to this. So if I want to change my tempo in this scenario, and if I was going to go use this live as like an original track, I would format it as well too. I'd, I would add my tempo track, but for now we'll just go up to lives global tempo. We'll type 90 BPM and I'll press play. And the biggest thing I want to point out is that um, I changed my tempo, but the timbre of my song still sounds uh, like it did before. Um, and it, it sounds, it's, 
to Lives Click, right? It's in time with Lives Click. So we could change our tempo really easily. Same thing we could do is we could change our uh, pitch. And earlier we changed our pitch and you saw how it squished our song and changed. But watch, even as I drastically change my pitch here, you don't see the length of this clip changing because it's not changing my tempo. So I could, for instance, go up uh, two half steps, which is one whole step. You could press play and let you hear it's still in tempo. It's still in sync with Live's Grid, which is great, uh, and Live's Metronome. I could go down uh, two half steps or a whole step here, and you'll notice same exact thing. Um, uh, it still is in time and sounds correct. Now, final thing I do want to mention, if you are pitching uh, a vocal, a single track vocal stem or something like that, then again, maybe consider Complex Pro if you're changing the pitch. Um, that will kind of maintain the timbre. The other thing you may want to do is uh, go to repitch. And if you repitch, then this kind of functions like uh, audio does when it's unwarped. As I change my tempo, it's going to change the pitch of my audio. Um, and this could be a good effect, again, if you're working with individual samples. And this is more towards working with one shots or doing something to make it sound like you're scratching a record and slowly as it slows down, it, it, uh, uh, the pitch goes down as we speed up, the pitch goes up. So mess with those warp modes as well too. But in general, if you're using this, uh, and, and I think most people watching this channel um, are using live in a live performance scenario, then you're gonna be looking at complex or a full track audio and a full track song. So that's a look at how to change key and tempo, both of our stems in Ableton Live, our multi-tracks in Ableton Live, as well as single track audio. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to do this in a way that's efficient and in a way that isn't gonna take hours and in a way that is using live uh, in a very stable way, which is super important in a live performance scenario, uh, then you're gonna wanna want make sure you download my free tracks template. And that's going to give you everything you need to get started and to get up and running and do this in an efficient, effective way. And to get that, you can head to from studio to stage.com slash template. Again, that's from studio to stage.com slash template, completely free. You can download that and get up and running uh, immediately. And then finally, I post new content on this channel every single day, 10 a.m. Central, uh, all about running tracks from uh, gear picks to troubleshooting issues in Ableton Live. Uh, and if you're interested in that type of content, here's what you should do. Hit subscribe to this channel and then do me a favor, hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And what's really cool about that is you'll get a notification on your phone or on your computer, wherever you interact with YouTube, whenever I post new content every single day. And you can just simply look at the title and if you like it, click through and watch. If not, ignore it and catch me on the next one. But we have new content every single day, 10 a.m. Central. Would love to see you there. I would love to interact in the live chat if you happen to be joining um, live in the moment. And watching one of the premieres. If not, um, I'll see you on another video, maybe 10 a.m. Central tomorrow, the day after that. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you on the next one. Bye.